koinonia, a place of encounter with the Holy Spirit, and transformation by the principles of God's kingdom. of the Lord, which he will show you today. For the Egyptians that ye have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. He said, let me read for you now. And Moses said unto them, not God said unto them, Moses said unto them, the people, Fear ye not. He says, Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show you when. When? Today. He said, For the Egyptians whom you have seen today, he said, Ye shall see them again no more forever. Hallelujah. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Please shout and say in the name of Jesus. I decree and I declare that tonight is my night for total deliverance. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Lift your voice.
are ready to recover everything the devil took away from us. Tonight we are ready to experience the liberating power of your spirit. Your spirit tonight to receive and we decree and we declare in the name of Jesus Christ, may the God of heaven rest upon this place tonight and let there be a mighty, mighty deliverance in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you. Please be seated. Please be sensitive. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Tonight is the last segment of our deliverance series. Please let's have the anointing oil. Um, just come keep them here in front. Hallelujah. And um, I truly prayed from my heart, trusting the Lord, that something will really, 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 truly happen in somebody's life. Hallelujah. I have seen a life that Satan oppressed, and I have seen a life that God gave victory to. The difference is as clear as night and day. In the name of Jesus Christ. Obadiah chapter 1 and verse 17. Let your spirit be open. Let your spirit be alive. Hallelujah. There's so much noise here. Is it the fan? Please help me technical. You will have to work on this. If it's the fan, please switch it off. Please. I need to be. It's affecting me. Please. Hallelujah. Obadiah chapter 1 and verse 17. It says, but upon Mount Zion there shall be deliverance. It says, and there shall be holiness, and the house of Jacob shall possess their possessions. We've been examining the mystery of deliverance, helping the body of Christ to step into supernatural levels and supernatural dimensions of victory in Christ. It is my personal conviction as a man of God that it is not enough to read your Bible and see the things that the Bible declares should be our inheritance, but that we must press through faith and understanding to a point and a realm in the Spirit. Are we together? Where we will have access and walk in the experience of these realities. And tonight we must force this thing to work in our lives. In the name of Jesus. Three levels of deliverance. Let's get straight to the business of tonight. Um, the teachings are available. Part 1, 2 and 3. So for time's sake I may not go back doing any recap. Please bear with me. We have a lot to do tonight. And um, we're working to gain time. There are three levels of deliverance that I want to teach you. And in this teaching you're about to hear now is the reason why probably many believers do not gain complete deliverance. Most of the denominations that we have um, in one way or the other have engaged something related to deliverance. But the challenge usually is that we pick one of the three. And I've shared with you again and again, as you know, I'm very sympathetic to the body. I'm sent to the body. So every time I talk about the body of Christ, it is not in any way from a standpoint of sarcasm. Are we together? Um, so as I teach you this, I pray that God will open your heart. And if you're a man of God, I'd like you to examine these things very deeply and find out where you probably may be missing it in communicating the power of God to deliver to your congregation. Number one, the first level of deliverance is the casting out of the spirit influences in your life and at the back of your challenges. The first level of deliverance 
has to do with casting out the spirit influences in your life and if not in your life at the back of your challenges behind every challenge is a spirit that sponsors its continuity are we together the first level this is very carefully the first level of deliverance has to do with casting out the spirit influences there are always spirit influences either in our lives or at the back of the situations and circumstances that challenge God in our lives. So the first level of deliverance has to do with casting out the spirit influences. I thought you would want to put maybe two influences in our lives and at the back of our challenges. I want you to find a way of convincing yourself tonight. At the back of almost every challenge and every destiny head in one position, every family, every business, every career, every home is a spirit entity. That is sent and assigned to ensure that that process remains that way. Are we together now? We are not in ignorance as to the fact that our world is also full of spirits, not just men. Spirits. And that these spirits are also on assignment, just like angels. And that at the back of people's lives, and then at the back of mysteriously... Um, these topic situations are spirits sent. Deliverance is not complete when the spirit entity that are behind the situations in people's lives are left there. This is where I think that a lot of people, especially people who value um, education and intellectualism and science to an exaggerated dimension, this is where we miss it. There are people today who will never agree that there are spirit entities manipulating the lives of people. And I find that disturbing because Jesus did not leave us in the dark. As to the fact that, in fact, I will be showing you shortly that when he proclaimed the messianic prophecy that was upon him, are we together now? He went out and began to heal and the first set of those he addressed were those who had devils. There were spirits behind them. He met a woman who had been bound for 18 years. And the Bible says, he said, woman, thou art loose. Before he laid hands to heal her, there was a spirit behind her situation. These are the three doorways that granted it access. Number one, covenants. Number two, ignorance. Number three, disobedience. It is possible that a covenant is broken and the spirit still uses another channel to route your life. You must be aware of all the channels available. Are we together? So, number one, the first level of deliverance is casting out the spirit influence in your life and at the back of your challenges. I have ministered deliverance to people again and again and again and I see this all the time. I see the shock, like many of you have experienced, sometimes on the faces of the people, because they would never otherwise believe that there was a spirit influence sudden, in a very strange way, in less than one week, your life just... You know, although there's a lot of argument among men of God, whether or not there is something called deliverance ministry. Um, um, I, I, I'm not here to create arguments, but I believe with all my heart. I believe in the full gospel, and the full gospel captures a dimension of God that is able to deliver. And we know that it is God's system to allocate graces to men. So I believe that it is possible, I believe from the authority of scripture, that there is something called a deliverance ministry. You'll be foolish to believe in the healing ministry 
It will be foolish to believe in the evangelical ministry. It will be foolish to believe in the ministry of signs and wonders. We believe that there are people called to minister prosperity, to minister leadership. Why will we reject that there are people specially anointed to minister deliverance? I think it's just because of our resentment. Deliverance is a very messy ministry. This is not a ministry that comes with a lot of organization. Usually, it is presumed that if you are dull, and unenlightened, uneducated, and you don't know what to do with your life, you are most likely called into the deliverance ministry. And, and it's not so. Usually, people who are posh, nice, excellent, administrative, intelligent, calculated, uh, will usually not receive that dimension of the call. And, and, and I think it's the way it has been done in Nigeria and Africa. Because we have demons shouting, talking, you know, most when you see ministers that minister deliverance, usually they are unkept, shabby, unintelligent, they don't process their understanding, the churches are, are not well cultured. And so over time we have adopted an understanding that the messier you are, the more unenlightened you are, you are most likely called into that ministry. There's, there's no such thing as that. But I believe there, there should be specific people anointed and sent. If we don't believe in deliverance ministry, then there shouldn't be a healing ministry. Now, are we together? The second level of deliverance, and like I said, if you believe you are called into the deliverance ministry, this may probably be an area you may want to adjust. It's called deliverance the deliverance of transformation through the word of God. This is the second level of deliverance. Deliverance of or through transformation. Many people do not know that this is a dimension of deliverance as valid as casting out his spirit. Deliverance that comes to a man through Engaging that man's mind and understanding in a process that the Bible identifies as transformation. Herein lies the tragedy behind endless deliverances. Where a spirit is casted out, it goes, returns, casted out, goes, returns, and then sometimes we build a theology. Now, this is the part of deliverance I do not believe. That a believer should become a victim of a spirit forever and should have an endless cycle of continual deliverance for life. The Bible does not show that. Now, we saw that Jesus delivered men and they were delivered and delivered completely. The Apostle Paul was delivered. Are we together? The woman with the alabaster box, the one who Jesus casted out seven devils. But you see, the thing about Jesus' ministry, and, and I'm going to show you now, I'm going to show you something very powerful. The Bible says, the man in Gadara, let, let's go to that, let's go to that scripture, let's look for it. Where is that scripture? Help me. Mark chapter 5, I think I'm right. Give us Mark chapter 5. Say deliverance through transformation. Say it again, shout it, deliverance through transformation. Now, this is a very interesting story. The Bible tells us that in the country of the gatherings, Jesus himself, I want to see, um, I want us to read from verse 12 to verse 15. There's something I want to, I want to show you there. Deliverance through transformation. Now watch this. And the devils besought him, saying, Send us into the swine that we may enter into them. So spirits now, at the back of a man's madness. Are we together? And then, and forthwith, Jesus gave them leave. And the unclean spirits went out and entered into swine. And the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea and there were about 2,000. Can you imagine that? And were choked in the sea. 14. And they that fed the swine follow me now. And told it in the city. Fled, sorry. And told it in the city and in the country. And they went out to see what that was done. 15. Sitting and clothed and in his right mind. 
Jesus didn't just leave him. He knew that something needed to be done to his mind too. It was not just his spirit that needed to be right. So when Jesus casted that devil, he didn't wave him and say, go. He said, come and join this teaching ministry that will need to transform your mind. And the Bible says they came and met him sitting in his right mind. You can be delivered with a wrong mind. Are you listening to me now? It matters that we must engage this dimension of deliverance. The dimension of reorienting our spiritual understanding. This one comes through the ministry. The teaching ministry of the word is how people experience this dimension of deliverance. And I can tell you sincerely speaking, this dimension of deliverance is very scarce in the church. To teach the word does not mean to declare and to preach. We generally say you are a preacher. A teacher of the word is an explainer. One who brings the saints into a comprehension of the character, the person, and the working knowledge of the word. You have no reason to have weekly gatherings as a man of God if you are not teaching the word. You can be an evangelist and come into a land three days, win the souls, apologize for the sound, and I think there's noise somewhere. I'm sure they're working on it. Are we together now? You can come in as an evangelist. You can come in as a missionary and even stay three months, five months within a city. But if you ever trust God for a church, a ministry, a platform where you meet with people consistently, then it doesn't matter what spiritual office you operate. You must trust God for grace to be a teacher of the word. Otherwise, the saints will never experience this dimension of deliverance. Say deliverance through transformation. This entails reorienting your spiritual understanding. This entails opening you up to the nature, the character, and the systems of the kingdom. When your mind is enlightened, you are open to the nature of God, the character of God. Then the mysteries, the systems, the principles of the kingdom is taught you. When that happens, that door that is a stronghold for demons to access your life is closed and closed once and for all. Let me give you an instance. Let's assume that an individual is suffering from the ministry of, um, let's say there's hardship. Are we together? Now, the spirit compromise. He likes to talk about increase, so let me use him. Watch this. Let's assume that this gentleman here has all kinds of hardship in his life. Let's even assume his finances. And now I pray for him. Because say by revelation I see that there is a spirit behind that tragedy. Did you know that if I pray for him, he may fall down and stand up. He may even experience an instant testimony. By evening someone will give him maybe a little check or some money. 10,000, 20,000, whatever it is. But this gentleman will not sustainably stay delivered until I teach him the kingdom principle allocated for keeping the spirit of poverty at bay forever. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Now, I pray for him. And through the advantage, listen carefully, there is a prophetic covering over him and he may enjoy some level of results by the reason of that prophetic speaking over his life. But for sustainable result, to personally keep the spirit of poverty at bay, he must understand the economic system of the kingdom. Failure to do that will only recycle his pain. It's a matter of time. Notice that demon spirits have observed the carelessness of people in the body, especially men of God, that we are not thorough in creating spiritual enlightenment, so they are not afraid to live. Are we together? So I can look at him before I touch him. Ah, he's manifesting. The spirit goes. And he gets up and he's happy. And I hug him. I say, okay, so go and prosper. It is done. It is not done. I assure you it is not done. Halfway done. That guy, remember the Bible says that spirit will go around and say, I will return to my house. He will come back and find the mental construction of that individual still conducive for his operation. He won't enter alone. He will gather more wicked spirits of poverty, higher than him, and then return to that man. That's why you find out that people receive miracles and breakthroughs. 
And two weeks later, it looks like everything just knows dies. They refuse to engage in transformation. And sometimes it is members that put that pressure on pastors. They are not trained to sit down and receive the word. We want sharp, sharp everything. Are we together? Man of God, why is my life like this? I, I have watched with shock how that sometimes people can tell me, Apostle A, B, C, D is wrong with my life. And then I tell them, okay, listen to the following messages. And then come and see me afterwards. Maybe listen to gaining spiritual stature. Listen to this and that. And they just say thank you. And sometimes I can even point and say, the media stand is there. Just go there and they will give you the teachings. They will laugh and do as if they are going to turn and then turn around, just greet and say, sir, just touch my head. That's all me I want. You see that? It's a sign that many of those people may not receive complete deliverance. And the danger is that if they don't receive it, they will go back and then in their frustration, they'll say this man of God may not really be a man of God. Are we together? Have you been to the hospital where a doctor will give you an injection now? There's that one, you take it immediately. You turn and receive it right now. And then he can now tell you, okay, there's this drug. In addition to that injection, take this morning, afternoon, evening for five days. After five days, return back and let me look at your condition. Are we together? Now, if you take that injection, you can decide to go back and be careless. It's amazing how your health is dependent on those drugs. And then you don't take them and after five days you return and say, doctor, something is wrong. And the doctor said, no. If you did what I told you, I already know what should happen. So I'm surprised that this is not happening. Transformation through the word. He came and met the man in his right mind. Remember that the man later became an evangelist and won the Decapolis, 10 cities, because his mind was right. The Bible says in Romans chapter 12, when you read from verse 1 and 2, specifically verse 2, it says, um, and do not be conformed to this world. I've taught you again and again, the Greek word here is the word aeon, the thinking pattern that comes with a dispensation. Do not be conformed to this world. It says, but be ye transformed. Everybody say, be ye transformed. It's not an advice. Be ye transformed. How? By the renewing of your mind. Transformation. Renewing your mind is deliverance. It is the scriptural way to close the door that authorizes spirit entities to find expression in a person. Transformation. Transformation. Transformation is the way you become spiritual. A spiritual man is just, it's not just one who prays in tongues. A spiritual man is not just one who serves in church. Listen carefully. A spiritual man is not just one who is ordained. A spiritual man is not just one who is serving in a department. A spiritual man is one who has exalted the word of God. Listen very carefully. And the ways of God above the senses. So that man is governed not by his sensory perceptions, but by the word of God. When the word of God becomes the vista, your, your plane of looking at life, you are a spiritual man. You can pray in tongues and ignore the word, you are not a spiritual man. Most times we convince ourselves that just because we find ourselves around dissipating spiritual energy, Committed in spiritual activities, we believe that because we have done that for a long time, we are spiritual. No, that may be religion. True spirituality is measured by how much the word of God has not just found expression in your life, but has been received and the degree to which you are living by it. Many people are not spiritual. You know it by how they respond to life. A little challenge and you see them talking and you are wondering, ah. After five years in church, ah, I'm so happy. I'm dying. Everybody, ah, bah, no. 
The word of God is supposed to become a culture, a way of life. It influences your mind. It influences everything about you. The Bible says to be spiritually minded. It says to be carnally minded is death. Not will make you die. It's already death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. It says set your minds above where Christ is seated. Are we together now? You can set your gaze, not by looking up, by indoctrinating yourself with the truth of God's word, such that you are immovable, you are unbendable. That's what it means to be spiritual. When you are transformed and you experience this dimension of deliverance, you now tear down the strongholds that operate in your life through thought patterns. Everybody say thought patterns. Please shout it, say thought patterns. Check every territory. Where spirits seem to gain grounds. The way those spirits gain grounds is by making sure they create a mind control system so that the average person within that spiritual climate thinks in a certain way. I'll give you an instance. And please, I don't want you to feel embarrassed or whatever. I am not insulting any territory. But for instance, if you see a territory where there is a high rate of Maybe people getting pregnant without marriage. You find out that it's not just a wicked spirit that is working there. There is also a mindset. Are we together? That a lady of 12 years can be pregnant and the father can say, I'm proud of you. I mean, I can't believe you did this. This is, this is, this is fantastic. Meaning by tithing, you have settled the devourer. Yet you find out that that man's life does not change. Call for... Any kind of meeting that will give financial intelligence, he will look at you and say, no, it's not for us. You can go, and uh, if God will bless me, he will bless me. So, mindsets. We come from different territories. Some of us come from territories where it is easy for anger to come, because revenge is part of the way the culture is built. Don't let anybody take you for granted. An eye for an eye. Somebody touches you, give it back to him sevenfold as a sign that you are not weak. So in such cultures, if you don't revenge, you are, you are tainted as being weak. So now you are born again. And a brother offends you and there is that itch to revenge. And what a joy. The spirit has found a platform. And the spirit of anger comes. And before you know it, you wind your hand and give your wife a slap. And suddenly remember that you, you, you are supposed to have crucified the old man at the cross. Are we together? Listen, let me tell you. You know you are transformed when it takes a long time to trace you to a culture. Let me say it again. You know you are transformed. Aside from the physiological, the physiological features that can show that, okay, you are Yoruba, you are Hausa, you are Igbo, you are South-South, and all of that. Aside from that, there should be such a level of, of an excellent approach to life based on the word of God. That if it is based on your communication, I should find a hard time knowing whether you are Yoruba or Hausa or Igbo. It is time that the word of God has superimposed your culture and your cultural limitations. Sadly, I can look at people and almost in a heartbeat just say, you are from here, yes. You are from here, yes. The way you are behaving, it looks like you are from Plateau State. Say yes, sir. Say, huh? They are all like that. The way you are, it looks like Kaduna Abi. You look to me like you are, are you from Delta? I'm from Delta. How did you know? How do I know? Am I, am I mad? That's not a very, that's not an applause. Are we together? Because it's a sign that although you claim to be in Christ, experientially, you are still holding on to the strongholds and the mindsets. Are we together? That your transformation will so shock those around you. They looked at the disciples and they wondered, Ah, are this not, what, what suddenly happened to you? They were so changed. One time they wanted to go back to this, their life of war again. They said, Jesus, should we command fire? And Jesus turned and said, Do you not know of what spirit? You have suddenly forgotten that you are from heaven. Transformed. Someone will look at you and say, I know you are going to deal with him. I trust people from your place. Abba, this guy is in for a shock. And all of a sudden, you reach out to someone in love and hug the person. And you look and you say, this is strange. You say, this is not strange. I have been called out of every tribe, 
of every tongue. Listen to me. Of every nation. Are we together? Yes. This is the basis. Let me tell you the truth. And I want to say something now that is, is a bit sensitive, but listen to me. I think that this is the reason why many people, especially our loved ones, fear certain individuals traveling or marrying or living across certain regions because they fear that based on the default experience, are we together now, there can be a problem there. And they are right, except for transformation. They are right. Are we together? So someone says, oh, I want to get married to someone from the north. And the mother looks and says, is this, what, is this how you want to repay me? After, after all I've done to you, this is, this is, and then you now say, ah, the man is, is, is even, is, that's why a small church has started a work. I say, hey, he's even a man of God. It may not be your father or your mother or your relative's fault. They have observed through time that goodness. If someone within those regions accept the call, you accept the call and accept the stronghold that comes with that call too, and suffer and almost, you know, but then they are amazed when they see that there is an excellent mind, hallelujah, an excellent mind that vetoes your background. Say I've been called. Say, say I've been called out of my tribe out of my tongue, out of my locality. I come from heaven. I only pass through my geographic territory. If you don't understand this, then we are wasting our time this night. Because when we begin to pray, we are going to tell Satan, it is true that you oppress people from Plateau State, but I am not from there. You see that? It is true that you oppress people who are Yoruba people. It is true that you oppress Igbo people. But I only pass through there. My origin. My origin. So you don't tell me, oh, this land was dedicated to this. You may be right. But, ah, I've been called. Something called me out of that tribe and tongue. Let me tell you, the fact that whatever is in your territory is still affecting you is proof that it still recognizes your cultural loyalty. Like, if you are a football fan, let's assume you are a faithful football fan of, uh, give me one club side. Let me not create trouble now. Arsenal. And you are so faithful that they have your number. Even when you say, I hate them, you can still get a text from them. There's a meeting tomorrow. It's a sign that they still recognize your loyalty, your fellowship. It's amazing how we keep saying we are not tied to these things. And when the spiritual text is sent, you get it. The devil says you can talk all your nonsense. As far as I'm concerned, I'm sending a general text of failure to anybody in this family. And you are shocked that it reaches you. I say, no, my phone, you shouldn't receive this. That's your business. Your number was in the database. Transformation. 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 To rush to God. Receive instant deliverance and run away from God is only implicating yourself. The Bible says the name of the Lord is a strong tower. Listen, it says the righteous run it to it. It is that he runs in and then runs out and he stays. He runs into it and stays there. He that dwells, not he that visits, he that dwells. Listen, is the reason why many of our loved ones never receive breakthrough. They hate the house of God. So when they hear that there is a special program, they say, well, since we insist, let me visit. And they come and experience the power of God. And then they tell them, be planted in the house of God. Mm, all this church stuff thing, I'm not, I'm not in it. Please. Then they go back. And then they find out that it's a matter of time. This spirit is coming. Let me tell you, if you are a pastor, this is one of the reasons why you should trust God to have crowds come. It's not numbers. It's that you are giving God an opportunity to transform more minds. It's not all about just trying to look for a name. Oh, overflows here. We are this. I notice that there are men of God who so, I, I, maybe sometimes well-meaning insult crowds and insult pastors with large memberships and make it look like it's not all about crowd. My brother, for God so love, how many? That sounds like a crowd to me. He didn't say, for God so loved Jerusalem. 
He didn't say, For God so loved Nazareth, for God so loved Judea. No. It is God's will that all men be saved. And then the Bible tells us that part of our ministry is to disciple nations. Have you heard that word? To disciple nations. To disciple nations. Come from the word discipline. To keep them in a position where they learn. To teach them the matters of the kingdom. You must receive an appetite for the word of God. You must receive an appetite. Members must learn the value of seeking with the word to be mentored and to be trained. I have great respect for churches where the average member already knows the usefulness of sitting down to learn. Matter, matter. You are worried and upset about many things. One thing is needful and that Mary has chosen to sit at the master's feet. It takes time to produce results. So that your mind is changed, transformed. Are we together? So deliverance through transformation. And transformation by the renewing of your mind. The word of God being the principal channel for your transformation. Are you willing to submit yourself to be transformed against culture, against the, the nominal mindset, the mainstream mindset that comes? Because let me tell you, you become more like Christ when you think like Him. That I'll forever be changed. I'll be changed after you. Not just for two days, not just for one week. That I'll forever be changed after you. After his word and pant after his presence day and night. Chapter 1 and verse 8, Joshua, the formula that God recommended for success. He says, this book of the law, so the foundation of a believer possessing his possession. This book of the law shall not depart from out of thy mouth. He says, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. How long? Day and night. Say it after me. Day and night. That thou mayest observe to do all that is written therein. Then and only then shall you make your ways prosperous. Who will make his way prosperous? He says, and then you will have good success. This is God advising a man. Number three. So that we move to the next level. The third level of deliverance, and this is the final level, is called the discipline of conformity. Write it down. The discipline of conformity. This is where you actively participate. And this is where a lot of dear brothers and sisters around the world miss it. The discipline of conformity as a level of deliverance. Hmm. Romans chapter 8 and verse 13. And then we we'll look at Galatians chapter 6 verse 8. Romans 8 13. One to read. It's projected. One to read. Let's start again. For if he live after the flesh, I told you what the flesh is. A way of living. A way of thinking. Are we together? It says, ye shall what? But if ye through the spirit, so you will mortify, but an agency will empower you. You are in grace, but the doing is you. I told you that grace has dimensions. Not all dimensions of grace work automatically. There is saving grace. You don't do anything, you just receive. There is grace that empowers you to do. You participate. The disciplinary dimension is your responsibility. If he through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, what will happen to you? Please talk to me. You shall live. 
Galatians chapter 6 and verse 8. Whatever you ask of me, I surrender. Whatever you ask of me, whatever you ask of me, I surrender. I mean bribery like corruption, political party. Corruption means death. Death, period, in one word, death. But he that soweth to the spirit, a man can sow to the flesh, a man can sow to the spirit, both as soils, and the Bible guarantees that the harvest is waiting for you. When you walk in bitterness, you are sowing. Oh, dear farmers, listen to me. You walk in bitterness, you are sowing. I'm born again. But what is this guy trying to show me? And you are sowing. And the Bible says the harvest will come. You don't, you don't walk with your wife. You are fighting your wife. You are sowing to the flesh. The harvest is that your heavens will be closed. The Bible says so. You are born again. You are anointed. But for being unwise in treating your wife, you pay the price with a closed heaven. That tight open. And then your disobedience shuts the heavens again. So a tightening wife, Peter, is plus one, minus one. What's the answer? Whatever you ask of me, I surrender. One of the ways to sow to the flesh is to think that God is an expert in inconveniencing and rubbishing your life. You know, many believers believe that when you hand over your life to God, it's a call to stupidity, especially our generation. What is the, this you and church? Come, darling. What is you? You're a, you a fine lady. You're a wonderful lady. I mean, there's a, a rich man somewhere. What is this church thing? You're turning your head. Oh, man, this stupid apostle around. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. A man can sow to the flesh, and I promise you, whether you stop, whether you scatter the soil, it will still grow. Because they are all fertile soils. Could it be that many people, although the demons were casted, the discipline of conformity, discipline, the Spirit of God will empower you, but you must see the value of waking up in the night to pray as a principle that helps you conform. Are we together? Don't no, sit down there and say, Lord, the grace is not there. It's raining. This night is so cold and you just fresh. You are not serious. You have to speak. You have to create your reality. Someone can meet you and say, my dear, you are a very beautiful lady. There is a bar around. God has granted you the grace. You use your mouth and say no. You can say, well, let's see how things go. You have sown to the flesh. There is a harvest coming. When you get tipsy and the truck jams you, that's the harvest. When you snuff Tramadol and you lie down by the bridge and Mopol comes to carry you and they jail you for five years. What? That's called harvest. Say harvest. Shout it. Say harvest. It doesn't matter how it came. Listen. This is not being under the law. Get to the point. This is not being under the law. God is not a fool. He works with us physically. If God tells me to bless you, watch this now. If God tells me to give you 10,000, if I say come and collect, why do you come? Why do you get up and come and stretch your hand and say thank you? You are participating. It took this thing for that to happen. Are we together? Let me tell you this. God can speak and say, Pastor Alpha, you will be a mighty man. If you don't have the discipline of constraining yourself to conform to that word, you will keep seeing yourself raising wheelchairs in your dream till you die. You will never see it. There is nothing in the kingdom that does not require discipline. It says, he that warreth is not, he that strives for mastery. He says it's not crowned except he strives lawfully. There is no gift of fasting. Hello? Have you ever seen this in the Bible? There is no gift of whoever lied to you that fasting, your stomach will not you hear all kinds of noise while you are praying. 
you have to choose between the noise and your destiny. It's the discipline of conformity. Lord, if I stop fasting now and this grace goes down, what of the people that will be blessed? No, I receive grace, I will pray. You think those who get up in the night and pray and those who fast, just a, a supernatural wind just blew somewhere. No, sir. I'm sorry to say this, but our generation is a very indisciplined generation. That's why we don't become successful. We don't take anything serious, not just God, even our destinies. Are we together? You start a business, you open your shop by 12, you close it by 4 at will. You may have a bottle of olive oil in that shop. I guarantee you, you will still fail. Because there is no discipline. Father, if it be thy will, take this cup of me, but nevertheless, nevertheless, it is within my power. I have the power to lay it down. I have the power to take it up. I have the power to keep quiet. I have the power to speak. When they talk against you, you have the power to keep quiet so that God will now arise and fight. Let's not throw everything to God and just make a fool out of our lives. You have the power to be disciplined. God has anointed you to be a good worship minister. You need to be disciplined to wake up in the night to pray and receive songs. And write and edit and receive songs. As a man of God you are called, you need to be disciplined to sit down and take notes and research materials. Do you know, let me tell you sincerely, Jordan is here and he will tell you, do you know how many books I read just for this, this series? You won't believe it. I listened to more than 11 to 15 ministries. Different perspectives. Not because I don't know anything about it. Why will you read so many books just for a series? Everybody say discipline. Please shout it. I know you don't like it. Say discipline. Nothing just happens like that. This is where many of us miss it. There is a dimension of deliverance called the discipline of conformity. You constrain yourself on the strength of what you are looking at. There's too much distraction. You want to be great, but anything goes. Oh, someone is marrying somewhere. I need to run and go. Yet God is calling you a man of God. You have a conference in two days. You are there, one name is ceremony there. You are there again to cut, uh, to, to, to one of you. Are, you are just moving up and down. And then you wonder why the power of God does not come. Discipline. There are times I'm so tired, humanly speaking, let me tell you. Sometimes you see it. I can be so tired. The last two weeks I've been ministering every day back to back. You think if I have, if I have my way, what do you think I, I want to be doing now? Just find somewhere, somewhere and, and throw away my phone and, and shut my ears and sleep. It's called discipline. Yes, there is grace. But let me assure you, if you are not disciplined, you are abusing the grace of God. There are many funny graduates around just waiting and believing that with, with indiscipline and carelessness, they don't pay attention to conform to the terms of success. Insult anybody and believe they will prosper. My father is this. No respect for authority. No respect for anything. The discipline of conformity. Philippians chapter 3. We we'll read from verse 12 to 15. Philippians chapter 3. Not as though I had already attained. This is Paul. Either were already perfect. The word perfect is the word mature. But I follow after that if I may apprehend that for which I am also apprehended of Christ Jesus. 13. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. One of the sponsors of indiscipline is an arrival mentality. The moment you believe you have arrived, the deception of little results, the deception of little success, 
one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, and doing what? Reaching forth unto those things that are before me. 14. I, the first two words, please speak to me. I, remember this was the guy that taught us the Pauline epistles. I press. I press. Have you read that place that the Bible says to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling? I press towards the mark. I press. I press towards the prophetic word. It is true that God has told me you are a deliverer in this family and the grace has come. That grace will make sure I must be on fire. So I press. I wake up in the night. Lord, the mantle for the deliverance of this family is in my hands. While they are sleeping, they can sleep, but I press. Let every other name fade away. Let every other thing fade away. Listen. Listen. It will take you engaging prophecy to discipline. Otherwise, it will never come to pass. The ministry you have seen in the spirit, no matter how many demons are casted out of you, if you don't cooperate with the spirit to come to conform, you will never have it. You can sit down and see yourself building, building an estate. I saw an estate, and I saw a spirit behind the estate. Apostle Joshua Selman can say, "The name of Jesus, that spirit go. The spirit has gone." But you do not sustain the discipline to sit down. That discipline may mean upgrading your mind. That discipline may mean you sitting and speaking every day. That discipline may mean you telling certain friends, look, I'm in a new season. I love you. I know we're from the same background, but honestly, I must leave you now. Discipline, I can tell you this from experience. You will never do business with God if you ignore this. I think. Don't just think, no, you have a right to do whatever you want to do. It takes discipline to sit down and count the money and say, in the name of Jesus, I know that I, I have what it takes to complete this nice set, but in the name of Jesus, I choose to say no. I love my tomorrow more than my yesterday. I love my tomorrow more than today. Spirit of the living God, I will, I will, I will walk with you. I discipline myself. It's better to be hungry today. And to eat tomorrow's food today. Are we together? The next time you admire someone with a mighty hand of God, let me tell you, among the many parts of the equation, don't just say he's lucky, there is discipline. I say this with all humility and not to brag. When I stand here by seven, I live here by twelve almost every Friday. It gets discipline. Do I have to do it? If I say I'm not seeing anybody, nobody's going. They will even say, Apostle, you have tried. I come and stand here and I go back home and it's not sleep that I'll sleep. Sometimes by five, I have to be up to catch a flight. Say discipline. Don't just say, Kai, God is increasing these people. Discipline. It takes discipline to see God's money and leave it there. Really rest upon your shoulder. I remember a few years ago, we went to a particular hotel, very nice hotel, went for a ministration, and I was preparing for the meeting. The hotel had swimming pools, had a lot of things, and these were wonderful people. I mean, when these guys saw this swimming pool, they were happy, they just went, they were swimming, they were playing table tennis, I was just watching them from my and I laughed. And the Lord said, for somebody is coming three hours later, crying and saying, Lord, will you change my destiny? And I swim away that person's miracle. There is a time to swim. Now is not the time. Don't get me wrong. There is a time to swim. Are we together? There are times that I go to minister somewhere 
and they prepare very serious honorarium and God says don't collect it bless the people say discipline it takes discipline to obey lay your hands on your head and say Lord take in discipline out of my life forever pray of conformity. The grace to take my destiny seriously. The grace to take my assignment seriously. The grace to take the destinies of others seriously. That through discipline, I can cast out devils from my life. Discipline in waking up early. Discipline is body. Discipline. This one thing I do, forgetting the things that are behind, I press my faith as a sign that I believe my future. Listen, please sit down. Thank you. If these three levels of deliverance doesn't happen to you, forget about possessing your possession. The spirit may be casted out, but your mindset will allow it to stay. Do you know, for someone, you don't have any spirit in you, but this is the access point. For others, just discipline. God told you that there is something you have to read in a book. You bought that book since January till today. And the Spirit of God is waiting for you. And you are saying, Lord, you have not brought your word to pass. And God said, no, 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 no. I answered you since January. The indiscipline to sit down. I will go to Jordan's bookstore tomorrow. Uh, Jordan, is this book around? It will arrive next week. You don't follow up. All successful people, whether in the secular or in the state. even those who drink and smoke, they are disciplined. Forget all that acting they do. They are very disciplined. Disciplined with money. There are people like that. God has casted the devourer, but indiscipline. You collect a salary of 30,000. You carry your friends immediately to a restaurant and blow up 20,000 and wonder why the spirit of poverty still remains. Discipline. As a student, you are wearing a uniform of 10,000, 20,000, and all your parents give you in a month is 5,000. Say in discipline. That's right. In discipline. I don't cook. You are a student. I don't, it's not, I'm, it's not my thing. This, this, our pride is what, in Africa especially, is why these spirits never let us go. One of our parents, the discipline, of getting blessed. Oh, sir, um, God is going to touch you, but can you be disciplined and just wait? Um, I'm not, I, I can't do that. I can't. I, I, you want life to bless you at your own terms. That's a joke. Who for the joy that was set before him? What did he do? Endure. Endure and take discipline. Have you seen people in a gym? Someone in a gym trying to work out. Have you seen people laughing in a gym? Except if they are producing videos for you to buy. But if, if they are in a gym, meaning be carrying all those things, look at the world heavyweight. Their faces become ugly, and yet they are determined. While he's doing that, he's seen the trophy already. You need to see something that gives you the strength to not be distracted. And we will never settle for less. We know there's more than something. your family where all the women marry terrible and unserious men. Watch this now. Now it is true that you have been delivered. That spirit was casted out. Are we together? Please hold on. And then God now helps you to think well. And then God says, wait until my will comes. What does he tell you? 
wait until my will comes. But in discipline, your body is itching. All of a sudden, one irresponsible guy just appears from nowhere and says, um, uh, you know how things are, don't keep waiting like this. And you stand and God is telling you the choice is yours. Do you know? If you get up, you know the man is smoking. You know he's drinking. He says, I don't smoke all the time. Once in a while, I say, okay, I can make do with that. Remember, you are making a choice. Too indiscipline. And God is watching. But I'm supposed to deliver you. I'm, I'm bringing you out. I'm using you as a specimen. And you say, God, I can't wait again. Please, I can't wait. If, if by March or by, by August, this guy, whoever shows up, the devil says, what did you say? Time. Whoever shows up. And they would just want to drag one funny guy. And just because the guy is in church and he wore a tie and, and talking with belts does not mean that he's serious. And before you know it, two indiscipline. Are we together now? Two indiscipline. You now say, Yes, I will marry you. Your father will say, I'm, I'm sensing that you are in danger. I said, Daddy, don't worry about me, please. Age is not on my side. And you marry, and you find out that the same thing that happened to your elder sister has now happened. It was not the spirit. The spirit was casted. You paid the price to get a correct mindset. The information for your deliverance has been given. But the discipline of conformity was not there. Shout, I will wait. One of the hardest things for believers to do is to wait until the hand of God comes to assist you. This is not just in the issue of marriage. In the issue of job, God says, stay, I will direct you. The next thing you just hear that, okay, there's something somewhere. And you say, Kai, I don't, I'm ashamed. The last time I went for a wedding, I saw all my classmates. They were all in class. And me, they were even asking, what are you doing? Pastor, you are still like this. And the next thing you jump. When, when the devil wants to destroy some people, you will make sure you get visa to U.S. Whereas your, the will of God for you is in Nigeria. And you smile your way to U.S. out of the program of God. It takes discipline. It would never have been my desire to be in Zaria by this time. No. Oh God, you are my love. And I will never praise you. Oh God, you are my God.
Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Fill this temple with your presence. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Fill this temple with your presence. We wait on you. And the Lord told me that once I got to this topic, just this experiencing complete deliverance, there will be very mighty angelic activities. John chapter 19, please let's hurry up. From verse 28 to 32. Or to 30, let's stop at 30. Experiencing complete deliverance. This is good news. That means it is possible that a man, Jesus himself, how many of you know that his words are powerful? Jesus said, no matter what happens, there is a potential in the kingdom that a man can be completely free. He that the Son of Man sets free is free indeed. Apostle, this is good news. You mean after 100 years of captivity in my family, there is a way out? That there is a way out that I can say it is finished. Finally, the train of barrenness. Finally, the train of poverty. Finally, that people don't rise in this family. That there is a cause and a yoke. That a time can come in a believer's life where, like Jesus, you say, It is finished. Complete deliverance. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The cross can go. Yes, sir. The barrenness can go. The failure, the retrogression. I saw my father go down. I saw my mother go down. So there is a way out in Christ. Jesus, the Son of the living God, said, It is finished. He opened a new one, a living way. A pathway that a man can obtain complete deliverance. Not up to there and down tomorrow. Hallelujah. Be sensitive. Sit down. We are not, not praying yet. That's why we kept the oil here. Because the oil too is hearing the sermon. I want to show you a mystery. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. It is this revelation that makes deliverance a mystery. From part one to three to four. This is where we are coming to now. Listen and pay attention. And let me tell you. I want to show you how I was delivered. Get ready for my. I want to show you what worked for me. I am a testament. Of this. I would never be where I am today. God Himself revealed this by His Spirit, and I want to show you complete deliverance. Complete deliverance. I truly, I came with my heart open. I cried to God and I said, Lord, this thing has to go. Everybody shout it is finished. Shout it again, it is finished. This is Jesus speaking. Not Angel Michael. It is finished. So he gave me access that it is possible. Oh, look how healing this is. But you mean, did you know? Look, some of you here, as I'm talking now, you are just thinking of the mess in your background. That you have been crying and say, Lord, it's just more deliverance I need. Hold on. Some of you here, I've counseled you. 
you come from backgrounds where your parents were priests directly. Not that they went to priests directly. There are territories here that were dedicated to all kinds of devilish idols. It is I found this years ago. I told you about demons oppressing me. This simple scripture you see, when God shined it in my spirit, I was reading a book really. That's where it came from. But I said, Lord, I, I, I don't know, but this is what I'm seeing. And then God broke this thing down that I'm about to show you. Sit down. Sit down. Let's learn. We're going to pray. Experiencing complete deliverance. The first thing I want to talk about quickly and then I will show you the three ways is I want to teach you the legal system of the kingdom very quickly. The realm of the spirit is a legal realm. Please listen carefully. The, the realm of the spirit is a legal realm. Proverbs chapter 26 and verse 2. Mighty God. 26 and verse 2. Read with me. As a bird by wandering and as the swallow by flying. Uh -huh. So the curse, causeless, underline causeless, shall not come. Meaning, if there is no cause for it, it should not have come. If you ever saw any limitation in your life, there is a system of authorization. Because there is a law in the spirit that when a thing does not have a reason to come, it does not come. So the barrenness, the failure, everything has a reason. A curse, causeless, cannot come. If it ever came, something authorizes. There is the legal system of the kingdom. Redemption, as we know, was done on legal grounds. Jesus did not just come. The Bible says the soul that sinned, it shall die. It's a law. God himself had to submit to that law. Are we together? It says without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. So the Son of God did not just become a man and came to the world. No. The Bible says by one man, sin entered. So it could not take a spirit to save men. It had to be a man. Jesus had to be a man. I want you to see the legalities that the Son of God went through. Are we together? Jesus had to be 30 years to start his ministry. Because in Jewish custom, if you were less than 30, you were not considered a man. So it wasn't about his spiritual life. He had to wait and go through it until he was 30. Jesus could just fall from the sky. Like Elijah, the people say, Elijah the chief fight. But Jesus had to grow in a woman's womb. And was born and cried and could die and grew from a young baby to a young child, teenager, adult, and all of that. He passed through it. There is a legal system in the kingdom. Let me show you something. Isaiah 41, verse 20 and 21. The verse of emphasis is 21. Isaiah 41. That they may see and know and consider and understand together that the hand of the Lord has done this and the Holy One of Israel has created it. Read 21 for me. One, two, read. Aha. Uh -huh. This looks to me like a lawyer's language. This is the Lord speaking. Produce your cause. Bring the legal terms. Bring before me. So Abel said, I will produce my cause. And the blood went to heaven and said, God, have you not said whoever destroys man, whoever kills by the, lives by the sword shall die by the sword? I did not live by the sword and now somebody has slain me. My blood was cried and God came and said, Cain, your brother's blood is crying. And he said, am I my brother's chief? I said, don't talk that nonsense. Blood is crying. The legal system of the kingdom. God, as kind as he is, is teaching us how to make him bless us. And he said, when you pray, ask me to give you this day our daily bread. Otherwise, you will never eat it. It is God. 
Son of man, say to these dry bones, I'm waiting for you. If you don't say it, it may never happen. The dry bones did not move at the word of God. It moved at the word of God through the mouth of a man. He says, say to this dry bone, the dry bone, ah, you are now talking, no. Bring forth your strong, how many reasons? Bring forth your strong reasons why you think you should be the first graduate in your family. Bring forth your strong reasons as to why you think that you should not fail in life. Look at me. You saw people went to school and the devil taught them like a lion. Bring forth your strong reason. Why you are the last born in your family and you believe that like Joseph, you are the one who will feed them. Bring forth your strong reason. When I saw this years ago, I said, my God, bring forth your strong reason. Don't just sit down and think it will happen. There is the legal system of the kingdom. The legal system of the kingdom. The legal system of the kingdom. So let me teach you three steps now. Number one, you want to experience complete deliverance. Your first assignment is to break the legal hold of Satan and all the demonic powers over your life or your family or your church or your destiny, whatever it is. The first assignment is to break the legal hold of Satan. Break the legal hold. A curse causeless shall not stand. Barrenness causeless shall not come. Failure causeless shall not come. Delay causeless shall not come. If it is there, something is authorizing it. Your first assignment is to break the legal ground. This is where, ladies and gentlemen, I introduce you to the powerful mystery of the blood. I plead the blood, I plead the blood, I plead the blood. I plead the blood, I plead the blood, my precious blood. I plead the blood, I plead the blood, I plead the blood. eternal saving God. Listen. When you are about to face the gates of darkness as a final onslaught, there is no other weapon that you can carry. The first weapon for true victory is the mystery of the blood. The blood. The blood. The blood. Five scriptures very quickly. Matthew 26 verse 27 to 28. Matthew 26. Matthew 26, 27 to 28. And he took the cup and gave thanks. And he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. 28. For this is my blood of the New Testament. The blood is done, is what? Is shed for many. Why? For the remission. Remission. So a system has been initiated in the spirit. Remission. The word remission means to blot out. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 7. Ephesians 1 verse 7. Then we'll look at Colossians 1 14. Read with me please. 1 to read. In whom we have redemption. How? So how does redemption happen? Please talk to me. Redemption. Redemption through the blood, the forgiveness of sins. It didn't say the forgiveness of your sins. It doesn't matter whether it's your sins. Our fathers have sinned. There is a system. I used to think it's the forgiveness of your sin. No. There is a mystery of atonement. Notice. For those of you who cast out demons, sometimes you see those, they just shout and talk, I won't go, no, 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 no. The blood, for the forgive, whatever ill 
to see me to meet the mark. Whatever happened around my life, whatever happened around my lineage that authorized darkness, there is a system of atonement. According to the riches of his grace. 1 verse 14, Colossians. Colossians 1 verse 14. Once again. In whom we have redemption through his blood. Even the word. I hope you know there is a law in the spirit. That when you see the travail in the soul of your offender, your heart will be at peace. Look at this. Come, Sheol. If Sheol steals my handkerchief and they catch him, my satisfaction is in his punishment. Is that true? As they punish him, I now feel at peace. If they don't punish him, I feel bad. So the Bible says he shall see the travail of his soul. Who is the he? Not Jesus. Man in Christ. Because he was at the point of exchange. We offended the Father. And according to this law, there is a requisite level of punishment that must appease the heart of the offender. And Jesus said, instead of you and your father, let me stand in for you. So while they beat him and blood came out, the father watched, took his face away. And then the Bible tells us that he was seeing the travail. That means the yoke and the ordinances that they did. Remember, they murdered missionaries in your village. And ordinarily, until these things happen and they kill everybody based on that, because their blood cries. But then, God in heaven will see those who offended the grandfathers that made the cause to come upon the family in Christ. The travail. And the father says, that's enough. I set you free. It is finished. Redemption to his blood. Even. So there is a kind of redemption called the forgiveness of sins. That your wrongs, your sins. If sins are forgiven, then the consequences they bring are also forgiven. And the authorizations they give is also forgiven. Are we together? Revelation chapter 5. Just follow me closely. Jesus grant us grace tonight. We have to be fast. Revelation 5, 9 and 10. Quickly please. Revelation 5, 9 and 10. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and open the seals thereof. Uh -huh. For thou was slain and hast redeemed us unto God. How? By your blood. Out of every kindred and every tongue and every and every these are the four realms where causes exist. Look at this. Please go back to verse 9. Out of every kindred, every tongue, every people, every nation, everything was covered. We were redeemed by his blood. I hope you know that God ensured that Satan participated in the death of Jesus. That was the only way that the blood of Jesus could haunt him. When Cain killed Abel, who did Abel's blood haunt? So whoever killed Jesus is the person who the blood of Jesus should haunt. Had they known this, they would not have crucified who are the day? Satan alongside the principalities and powers. Satan, God made sure in his wisdom that they all participated in the death of the son of the living God. And then verse 10, it says, He has made us a kingdom of priests unto our God that we reign on earth. The last scripture, Revelation chapter 12 and verse 10 to 11. Popular scripture. And I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, Now is come salvation and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of the, not the hidden, the accuser of the brethren is cast down. 
which accuse them before our God day and night. Next verse. And they, he had been cast down, but to appropriate the benefit of what has happened, they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. They overcame him. They overcame him. They overcame him. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. Listen, listen. The moment the mercy of God steps in, I've told you this. The moment the mercy of God steps in over an issue, my brother, my sister, listen to me. You know that card they call end of discussion. It truly is end of discussion in the spirit. The moment the blood factor comes in, notice that when the blood was put on the lintel of the people, it had nothing to do with their personal belief in God's deliverance. The moment the angel of death saw blood, even if it was Pharaoh, if Pharaoh's son entered one of those rooms where there was blood, he wouldn't have died. Even if he was cursing God from the room. The same stiff-necked people that cursed God later on were in that room. But because there was the covering of the blood, so every time we engage the blood, many believers don't know how to engage the blood. To engage the blood is not just to shout, I plead the blood, I plead the blood, I plead the blood alone. Are we together? It looks like it's drizzling or rain or so. Please, if it is, just let the people find a way of stationing them around. We're, we're about to pray, so we'll find a way of making it happen. Are we together now? Everybody say the blood. So the first mystery that brings deliverance is the blood. When I had this revelation, I began to pray. And let me tell you, that was when I found the mystery of Psalm 51. They gave me that scripture. Psalm 51 was something that I forgot about that scripture many years. It was this year that God reminded me again. Psalm 51. Please give it to us. Our time is gone. Let's see how we can do justice. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according to the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgression too. Let's just run it. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Three. For I acknowledge my transgression and my sin is ever before me. Four. Against thee, thee only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight. Listen, let me tell you. You can carry your family and in covenant stand as you make. This is not just about one man. It can be one business. It can be one family. It can be one church. Many believers will not believe this. That thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when, when thou judgest. Verse 5. You can read it down, down, down. Behold, I was shaken in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me. And you read this scripture and cry the mercy of God. Listen to me. Nineveh was a land that was so depraved. When God sent Jonah, Jonah said, God, I'm not going. He said, I know you. I know you. I want to allow this thing remain so that you will be angry and curse these people. I know that if I talk to them, you are merciful. They will now repent and you will act as if they didn't do anything that warranted punishment. And he ran away. He ran away for a justifiable reason. There was something about God that he knew. The Lord is gracious and compassionate. The Bible says he is slow to anger. So if my father or my mother went to sacrifice a baby and drain the blood to send me to school, and now there is a spirit that stands on legal ground, I can stand before God and knock on the door of mercy and say, Lord, I know that the soul that sins it shall die, but do men die twice? Is it not appointed one for man to die? And after that, the judgment. And Lord, your son has died. And what judgment? No one condemns you if you are in Christ. And you stand on that legal ground. And God says, done. Done. It may have been 30 years, but done.
Lord, I went to a herbalist myself because I was looking for a wife or husband. Lord, I went by myself. I wanted to pass exams. I went to Zaria City. I went and did this and that. Lord, I know that I did all of this. And you stand before him. And then the blood speaks. Every time the father sees the blood, Satan sees judgment. Every time you point the blood, to plead the blood does not mean to chorus it like a charm. To plead the blood means to bring to remembrance. It's not just saying, I plead the blood. To plead the blood is a revelation. Bring to the Father's remembrance the substitutionary work of Christ. And that the blood, the sinless blood of his eternal son that was given in exchange for my deliverance. Mm. That's the first thing I did. And that's the first thing anyone must do. If all you keep doing is in the name of Jesus, I'm free, you're in trouble. Pleading the blood entails a broken and a contrite heart. You see, let me tell you. There is a level of repentance that brings the hand of God to a man. It's not this arrogant, I plead the blood, Lord, just get up and break 250 years yoke of killing people in my, in my village in the name of Jesus. After all, you died. No. A broken, there is an attitude that makes the blood effectual. Are we together? The fact that the Bible says we should come boldly does not mean it says we should come arrogantly. Lord, I stand before you and I know that on my own I will never be able to make it. I watch my mother cheat people. I watch my father cheat people. I watch my siblings cheat people. Somebody lost a job because of his wickedness. It is true that as a family we deserve this. But Lord, I stand on behalf of my family, if my people, which are called by my name, although they are called by my name, it is not automatic. They must humble themselves and pray and seek my faith and turn from their evil ways. Then will I hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and heal their life. And I said, Lord, it's a deal. And I cried. I would never forget that night. Lord, let your grace and your mercy speak for me. My grandfather served you until he died. Even on his deathbed, he died for Jesus. In your anger, remember mercy. Lord, if you leave me the way I am, I will never make it in life. Lord, can the dead praise you? Let me show you how people touch the heart of God. Lord, if you take my life now and you allow witchcraft to kill me, like it killed everybody in my family, can the dead praise you? Lord, if I give birth to children out of witchcraft, you are presenting your strong reasons. Lord, is it not you that has said you are a merciful God? I stand before you without argument. And God arises from heaven. Many believers do not know how to touch the mercy of God. It was the psalmist that would write everything he did on behalf of Israel and say they should make a poem out of it. Let us with a glad soul mind praise the Lord. He said, for his mercy is endure. He's ever faithful, he's ever sure. He will even say, Sila, think about it. I didn't go to God with a bold face as a man of God to say, God, let me tell you something. My grandfather was a pastor. I love you. I, I, I don't drink beer. I stand before you in my self-righteousness. Is that pride that kills people? Someone must go down on his knees and say, Lord, a cause causeless shall not stand. There is a reason why we are failing in this family. There is a reason why doors are not opening in this family. And Lord, I stand before you. Who else will I run to, oh God? Will you let men see? Be like the saints of old. They knew how to talk to God. Lord, will the living, will the dead praise you? If you pay, if you do this, do you want them to say you brought people out of Egypt but could not take them to the promised land? And the Bible said God repented. Have you heard that? He said, Come, let us reason together. That tonight someone can say, God. Will the unrighteous and the righteous receive the same reward? What then is the value of your blood? 
and you will think you are joking and God is listening to you. Lord, is it a crime that I came from the north? Must I feel the failure? Is it a crime that I'm an evil man? Must I feel that failure? Is it a crime? I came from a Muslim background. Now I'm born again. It is true that I went to all kinds of Alpha and the rest. But Lord, will I receive the recompense of sinners? Bring before him your strong reason and cry for his mercy. I did that. You appropriate the mercy of God in your life. Number two, in complete deliverance, you cannot downplay the power of words. Write it down. The power of words. Your words are a vital tool in establishing the victory of Christ over your life and situation. Matthew chapter 22 and verse 37. Please, let's hurry up. I already sense fire burning in this place. We'll do this thing very fast. And we'll pray. Mm. Matthew chapter 12, verse 37. Jesus said unto him, Matthew 20, chapter 12, 12, verse 37. Matthew 12, verse 37. For by thy words thou shalt be justified. I will tell you what words, it's not any words. And by thy words thou shalt be condemned. You know what the words are? Let the redeemed of the Lord do what? Let those who have become benefactors of his blood make that announcement in the realm of the spirit that Satan, you heard my conversation with the king of glory. And it is unto him I have seen, and he has decided to show me mercy. Therefore, I decree and declare that in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I declare that I'm free from all of these chains. The Bible says, declare ye. It looks simple. We make declarations without appropriating the blood and the mercy of God. When it has to do with deliverance, the blood opens the door. And then your words... You sound that word to principalities and powers. Words. There's a reason why there was an echo. It is finished. Jesus didn't have to say it. He said it for a reason. And the curtain of the temple was torn from top to bottom. There is a new and living way that we can step in. I remember the Lord asking me to speak and say, Son, Begin to speak and denounce yourself from every walk of darkness. And I began to pray. I have obtained mercy. I blot myself out every handwriting and every ordinance that spoke against me. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I obtained forgiveness. I have been called out of every tongue. I thought it was a joke until my life began to change in a remarkable way. Words are powerful. For with the heart you believe. And if you believe the blood speaks for you, then with the mouth, confession will be made. You don't keep quiet. The redeemed of the Lord speak. The righteousness that is of faith speaks. And then number three, complete deliverance. The ministry of the anointing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The anointing. Luke chapter 4, 17 to 21. Let's look at how Jesus announced his deliverance ministry, the messianic prophecy. And there was delivered to him the book of prophet Isaiah. And when he opened the book, he found the place where it was written, 18. Please, let's hurry up. The spirit of the Lord He's about to deliver now And he's showing us So before anything The spirit of the Lord is upon me Because he has helped me Anointed me To preach the gospel to the poor He had sent me to preach the, the To heal the broken hearted He had anointed me To preach deliverance to the captives He had anointed me to recover sight to the blind. He had anointed me to set at liberty 
them that are bruised. 19. He had anointed me to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. 20. We are reading to 21. And he closed the book. And he gave it again to the minister and sat down. And the eyes of all that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. 21. And he began to say unto them this day. When? Talk to me. This day. Say this day. That means from today. Don't be surprised when you see people free. It's what he was telling them. He said, I just read it. Meaning if you see demons flying, it's because an anointing is upon me. And today, that ministry starts. This is what Jesus was telling them. He opened the book and showed them. He said, I'm showing you from the book. So you are not surprised when you see a woman bound for 18 years, all of a sudden free. This day, I have come as a fulfillment of that scripture. Today, somebody's this day. Because the book has been opened, it is this day. The day the book is opened, that's your this day. The Spirit of the Lord. Because He had anointed me. Anointed me. Isaiah 10 27. Isaiah 10 27. This day. This day. This day. And it shall come to pass when. Notice that everything happens in a day. It shall come to pass in that day. What day? The day your faith loses. That day, the Bible says, if you, if you hear his voice this day, there remaineth a rest for the people of God. That his burden shall be taken away. Somebody will come and carry it away. That means it never will belong to you again. Notice two things that will be taken. A burden and a yoke. And the Bible says, and his yoke from off thy neck. It says, and the yoke. Mashana katos kabarakatos. The yoke shall be destroyed. Not because you are tired of it. Because of this anointing. There is an exact anointing that breaks yoke. It didn't say because of an anointing. There is a particular anointing. Now, let me tell you this. Not every anointed man can deliver you. This is what I want you to get. There is the anointing, an exact kind of anointing. Just because a man of God prayed for you, I'm telling you this, believe me. There is an anointing specifically ordained by God. The same way there is an anointing that prospers. The same way there is an anointing that heals. There is a dimension of the anointing that is allocated for detonating yokes. Like a bomb that is supposed to scatter somebody that was put by a wicked man somewhere. And you come and do something to it. And then it becomes like toy, like a piece of paper. How do you know you are delivered? Strange results. Instant results. Instant open doors. Let me tell you, deliverance is one of the things that happen instantly. My life changed like day and night. If I did ministry without this encounter, I would have been in for a rude shock. I found it. That there was a burden on my neck. There was a yoke. A burden on my shoulder and a yoke from my neck. I remember going to my village and passing around and seeing well-meaning people. Poor people. I saw how hard-working my father was. Very honest man. One of the most honest people I know in my life. Yet doors refused to open. This man will rise up like this and crash as if God does not exist. They were the ones who trained us in the way of the Lord. I never saw my father carry one bottle of alcohol. Not once. My mother served God. She was so innocent. She didn't know anything about witchcraft. It was Nigerian film that made my mother know 
that there was something like witchcraft. She was that innocent. Yet nothing changed. But when I engage the blood and I make decrees, and this anointing fell from heaven. Are we together now? You see why I said they should keep these bottles here? It's not just because of a ritual. Let me tell you. Except God did not send me. When this oil touches your head, many of you will step into instant visions. Instant visions. Listen. You will, you will see things. All of a sudden, you will start seeing things that had happened before. And God will tell you this is where it started. The same way you go to bed, hold it for me. Remember while you were doing your prayers, some of you kept seeing yourself. You were seeing where your problem started from. Secondary school, going back, seeing a lot of things. Look at the attack that happened. Some of you, all through while you prayed, you never saw anything good. Night after night, because Satan is a master of the flesh realm. I told you to just continue and don't mind him. The yoke shall be destroyed. I remember that anointing oil when I bought it that night. I left it open in the presence of God. I played Benihin worship from night, from, from morning till night. Soaking everything through my rechargeable. And when I did that thing, I was shaking like a leaf. I knew. There was like a physical mist in my room. And all of a sudden, I carried that oil. When that oil touched my head, that was it. I didn't even know where I was again. Alone in that room. I woke up many hours with strange visions. From that encounter, the revelations of ministry. I started writing like a madman. All of a sudden, doors. See, let me tell you. Do you know that everything that you have prayed for was answered but hijacked? By the time this door is open, it's an avalanche. Things would. Look, let me tell you the truth. I'm not joking. You will see people within a short time. A lady that nobody has a business of saying, I want to marry you. The Bible says. That how many people will come to you? I know he was speaking about men. But all of a sudden, a brother that was ordained to be your husband. But this wicked spirit will blind and make sure that they don't see you. By the time this yoke is taken, that brother goes to bed this night and God says, What are you waiting for? Your wife has been before you for 10 years. The helper of your destiny standing and watching you like this. But there had been a decree, never help him. And you find out, you will bring a friend, two of you will come to plead for assistance. They will help the friend and leave you. There are some of you here, with the kind of anointing God gave you, you should never be small. But you are even wondering why. I never call for people to come and they come. Something drives them. It was Bishop Oyedeko who was saying when Living Faith Church started, as anointed as he was and he is, their heavens were closed and they were fasting and praying. And the Spirit of the Lord told him, Come out. And he came out and he looked. And according to him, he said he saw something that looked like a dark, a thick layer of dark cloud. And the Lord told him, This is the blindfolding layer that the devil put in the eyes of people to misrepresent what you are doing. And then he told him to command it, and he declared that a light shines in darkness, and the darkness cannot comprehend it. And he said that the, the thing just folded like that. And he produced a poster with testimonies and wrote, Come and see. That was it. Living faith took another dimension till tomorrow. When I caught this revelation, that was when I saw that publicity was spiritual. At the point I studied, people thought it was a joke. I don't mean to brag. I'm not saying posters are wrong. You go around this city, you are not going to find one poster. But we will shift a meeting just by a simple announcement. Shift it and people will come. You try that and tell people shift it and people say, ah, that's it, I found a reason. There is an anointing. When the yoke breaker comes and sits and his weight rests upon your life, I'm telling you, anything that is not him must give way. 
Are you ready to pray now? Rise up on your feet. Oh, 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 oh. Take it, take it, take it, take it, take it. 
Come on, believers, pray. Hallelujah. Say the name of Jesus. Say it again in the name of Jesus. You spirit behind the tragedies in my life. Say every spirit behind the failures in my life. Behind the delay in my life. Behind every retrogression. Behind every closed door. Hear ye the word of the Lord. Tonight, your legal hold is broken by the blood of Jesus. Lift your voice and pray. The spirit behind the circle of failure. The spirit behind the circle of defeat. Hallelujah. 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 Now listen to me. Please let me plead with you. I know that you can see that it's past nine. Please. I know today's service may take a few minutes, but I'm pleading with you for the sake of your destiny. Just be patient with me and let's address this in this night. Are we together? Please don't let the devil. Many of you will find out right now that you are having the urge to just go. It's a spirit. It's because the spirits are about to be challenged. You may come with someone now as I'm talking. He wants to ease himself. He wants to cough. It's a lie. It's a spirit. I'm about to challenge something now. Hallelujah. Now, listen. This is what will happen. I'm going to pray on this oil. Please listen to the instruction, everyone. Those online, just get a bottle of oil so that while I'm praying, you can connect. If you are with your family members, get a bottle of oil. Even if they are sleeping, just touch their head. Please make sure everybody is touched by this oil. Are we together? If you have faith and you think you will not be embarrassed, you can even, the little oil that is in your hand, you can just place it on your stomach. Ladies, prophetically, you are touching your children on board to say, no devil, no devil. John was filled with the Holy Ghost from his mother's womb. Are we together? Praise the Lord. By the time, by the time this oil, we are going to be fast. Now, because of the way it is, um, we are going to station, I believe, are there tables around, outside? Or if there are not tables, at least there are, there, are, there are people who will stand. Now, this is what you will do. Please, we are going to coordinate. It's going to be very fast. There might be people falling under the anointing. We'll just help them. Please manage, help the usher so we don't injure anybody. Now, what I want you to do for me, please, just obey instructions. By the time we bless this oil, just a little of it, touch it on your head. If you have a little one, you can touch it on their head and then go back to your seat and start blasting in tongues till you are done. Don't pray anything in understanding. Are we together? Just go back to your seat. Under the anointing or not, just find somewhere and pray in the spirit. And by the time I'm done, I'm going to lead us into some serious spiritual prayers and speak over our lives. And then you will go to bed. And let's watch the God of heaven surprise you. Are we together? Please, anything that can spoil, carry it out of the way. Please, let's be fast. Father, in the name of Jesus, you anointed me. And Lord, it is time for your people to rise. This is ordinary oil. But in the name that is above all names, the Lord is asking me to put my hands in all the oils. In the name of Jesus Christ, I put my hands prophetically upon every one of this oil. 
in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, let it be an extension of the grace that comes with this office. In the name of Jesus Christ, I place my hand upon this oil. Father, we have had many anointing services in this place. But in the name that is above all names, I command this anointing oil to carry the yoke-breaking anointing. Let it carry the anointing for strength and total deliverance. Whoever must die as a result of this prayer, Sasekhet of Kasabata, as this oil comes upon your head, except God did not send me, a sword of judgment will start for them and bring them to the grave. If there is any physical agent that has held your destiny, and said, for as long as I'm alive, you will not move. People of God, I stand before you, and I tell you by the message of the grace that I've received, God will not only take away that destiny, their life will pay for it. In the name of Jesus Christ, please cover them strategically. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare right now, by the power of the Holy Spirit, Everyone under the sound of my voice, Lord, as they come under the influence of this oil, I decree and declare that let the fire from heaven not only fall upon their life, but turn every situation that must be changed around. In the name of Jesus, for those online, I pray for the various oils you are carrying. In the name of Jesus, as you anoint yourself and your loved ones, let the embargo of darkness, no matter how long it has been, let it break now and forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Please, let's have people, let's have them come quickly, quickly. You can start coming. Um, just coordinate them. I, I honestly don't know how we're going to do it, but we'll have to find a way. Yes, you can find a way of, even if it's for you to come and... You can start from here and then you come and go or do whatever it is. This very, very quickly. Make sure you are praying in the Spirit. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, listen. Listen. I want you to pair yourself into two. Very quickly. Just find someone. Find a neighbor somewhere. Allah Bakotisha. In the next, our time is gone, but in the next three minutes, all I want you to do holding the hands of that person is to just blast in the spirit. Just pray in the spirit. Go ahead and pray. Just go ahead and pray. Ra 
I am the Lord thy God that teacheth thee to profit and leadeth thee in the way that you should go. Just do what I'm asking you to do. Stretch your hands. In the name of Jesus, I declare that these hands that are stretched towards me right now become the hands of fire. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Please put your hand on your belly. Just put that hand there. Just do what I'm asking you to do. Put your hands there. The Bible says, for out of your belly shall flow rivers. Say in the name of Jesus, every treasure within me, as I lay my hands, I declare, come out now. Lift your voice and pray. Every treasure. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are going to round up. Don't mind all the prophetic acts you are doing. I want you to just trust my leadership in helping you get results. Are we together? Are we together? I'd like you to stand where you are and say in the name of Jesus, I prophesy to the north. Say it, I prophesy to the north. I prophesy to the south. I prophesy to the east. I prophesy to the west. Everywhere, Everywhere. my help, my help. Has, been has been ordained to come from. In the name of Jesus, I call you. Locate me now. Lift your voice and pray. It comes from God, but it passes through men. Send help, O God. Send help, O God. Send help, O God. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Just place your hand again on your head. Now, if you are finished praying, let me pray now. Any spirit that comes with ancestry, any spirit, hear my voice, you are a product of ancestry, sent and programmed for the, from the fathers to oppress the people of God. Right now, by fire, I declare by fire, I declare by fire, release your glory now. I declare by fire, so back at post Katarikato, embrace the canto Pakatadiakata. Every legal ground, I break it now in the name of Jesus Christ. spirits of delay that sit upon people's destinies so they don't move forward. Right now in the name of Jesus, may the power of the Holy Ghost through this oil you have made contact with command those devils to live now. The spirits of barrenness not just biological barrenness that makes that nothing works in your life. You study, you go and write exams, you fail. You get money, you do business, you fail. You get a job, they fire you. In the name of Jesus, I command by the power of the Holy Spirit, 
May that devil live your life now and forever. <laughs> Ladies, I'm praying for you now. There is a spirit that draws only married men or wicked, ungodly men to certain sisters. They don't know why. No responsible person comes to you. Right now, in the name of Jesus, if there is anyone under the sound of my voice who is in this category, I command that devil, come out of them now. Come out of them now. Come out of them now. Any spirit husband, any spirit wife, any demonic entity manipulating you in the night, coming to oppress you, in the name of Jesus, I declare now, be released in the name of Jesus. Be released in the name of Jesus. Be released in the name of Jesus. There's anyone here, I say it again. You always have dreams. Seeing yourself in your former house. Seeing yourself in your secondary school. Seeing yourself repeating something you have already done. Right now I speak to you. Speak to your life. I cause the spirit of delay. Speak to your life. I cause the spirit of delay. Speak to your life. I'm praying for people here. Every year, or every two, two years, or every three, three years, the same pattern repeats in your family. Either someone dies, or someone loses their job, or something happens. Right now, the yoke that creates patterns, I stand in the name of Jesus, and I break it from your life. I break it from your life. By the blood of Jesus, I break it from your life. The moment something good is about to enter your hand, you go to bed and you have a dream. Something strange happens and you lose that thing. It must find a way of leaving you. I pray for you now. In the name of Jesus, everything that makes sure that you see things but never handle them, I cast that spirit from your life now. I cast that spirit from your life now. I cast that spirit from your life now. Hallelujah. I want to pray for you now. Whatever pattern you saw in your parents, and you are seeing it now in your life, it could be poverty, it could be hardship, it could be failure. Jesus declared that it is finished. By the blood of the eternal covenant, he declared that it is finished. Therefore, I stand right now. I separate you from any pattern in your life that is tied to your lineage. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I pray for students. The moment you enter the exam or something happens to you that you cannot explain, I pray for you. May the fire of the Spirit separate you from failure forever. Separate you from failure forever. Separate you from failure forever. Be patient with me. You will thank me for this prayer and pray. This is what I did for myself. We're rounding up. Listen, there are people here 
It's not delay that you face. But what can be done in two weeks, it will take you almost one year. So it's like you are crawling to achieve things in life. Right now, in the name of Jesus, the spirit responsible for that wickedness, I command you to live your life now. Hallelujah. There are people here, you have never had one month in good health. It's a pattern you saw. You can treat malaria non-stop for three years. You can treat headache non-stop for four years. You can treat all kinds of infirmity. That one is no longer sickness. Pay attention, I'm praying for you. It's a pattern. You saw your father live on drugs forever. Your mother live on drugs forever. Now it's happening to you. Right now in the name of Jesus, may the power of God set you free from that pattern now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now I want to pray. Please just be patient with me. There are many other things we would not do once I'm done. My conscience, I won't be able to sleep tonight if I don't finish what I'm doing to you. Now, whether you believe in the prayer, put, put down your hands. Whether you believe in the prayer I'm about to pray or not, just be patient with me. Are we together? This is an intense deliverance session. Just pay attention. As you grow in the spirit, I pray that one day you will understand. There's no time to explain everything to you. But I want you to just listen to me and watch what the Holy Spirit does. There are three that bear witness in the earth. The Spirit, the water, and the blood. These are the same three elements of covenant. The Spirit, the water, and the blood. I'm praying now. If there is anyone connected by witchcraft, spirit entities, dedicated to your life and you were attached with them, knowingly or unknowingly. He is called the Father of Spirit. Therefore, I decree and declare every spirit connected to you. Lose them right now and let them go. Lose them right now and let them go. I'm still praying for you. Listen to my prayer. The water is a very strange mystery. Every water on earth is older than every man. It's the same water, the same strength that we still drink. There is no water that comes from anywhere. It's a cycle that repeats itself. And the Bible says this thing you see is a witness. It's a witness. Therefore I declare, in the name of Jesus, there are spirits that operate in this domain. And let me tell you something. Truth be told, this is only false when it is relative to the power of God. The strongest operation in the demonic kingdom are marine spirits. Listen to me very carefully. Many ignorant people have no idea of what I'm saying. Eighty percent, eight out of every ten people are tied by this mystery of the spirits that operate in water. When the spirits that were casted out of the man in Gadara left, they, were, they drove the swine right into water. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Just lift your hands and be silent and let me pray. Especially for those of you that live around river right areas. After today, don't worry, you can believe anything you want to believe. But right now I stand. Shakoto Satata. Rekete Kato Shabariata. I declare every marine power holding down anyone's destiny in the name that is above all names. In this night of deliverance, by the fire of the Holy Spirit, 
let them go now. Any dedication that have to do with marine powers, I release you from it now. 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 If there is anyone here who has been dedicated to any idol, you know that you saw things happen in your family. They brought one man or woman of God somewhere, or one herbalist, and tied your destiny to objects, made incisions in your body, gave you things to eat and drink. In the name of protection, Sakos Kapakatos Yata, Leketos Kaprakatokate Lekatola Hasiata, Rakatos Kebata. I command that covenant and I declare that it is null and void in the name of Jesus. It is null and void in the name of Jesus. It is null and void in the name of Jesus. Drop your hands. Brothers, please lift your head. When a man does not find his destiny early, when a man does not get established early, he said it is good that a man bear his yoke in his youth. There are many men, I, I need to pray for you. You don't know the mystery behind your life moving, but you are not moving. You love God, but nothing works. You are celebrating birthday after birthday. Birthday after birthday, you are 40 years still in your father's house. Every time you want to move out of your parents' house, something happens and ties you down. There are even people who are married but are forced to still live with their parents. The Bible says, therefore shall a man leave his father and leave his mother. This is a very serious prayer. I'm declaring right now, every gentleman here, the powers that held your father down, that he could not do much in his lifetime, that has held people within your locality, territorially, geographically, in the name of Jesus, every gentleman here, I release you, go and prosper. I release you, go and prosper. I release you, go and prosper. And in case your father or your mother or anybody cursed you and they are now dead, I stand here by this office in the name of Jesus. I reverse that curse over your life now. Maybe as a result of your past, you did something for your loved ones and in anger, they made a pronouncement. Don't say it doesn't matter. I stand in the name of Jesus by the ministry of God's mercy and grace, I speak over your life for every cause that has been pronounced upon your life. I release the blessing of the Lord. 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 I want to speak over everyone's finances here. In the name that is above all names. Hey, let me tell you this. If you lack financial resources, your life will never move forward. No matter how well meaning you are. It takes financial resources to do ministry, to do business, to take care of these are little children here, you see. There are many things. It takes finances to take care of your parents. It takes finances to get a blessing from them. You will need to do something. They will not just bless you like that. 
He said, make me venison that my heart will rejoice that I will speak a blessing over you. I decree and declare, whatever has closed the doors, and don't think just because you are getting a salary or you are getting something, you will not receive the prayer. Expand your capacity. I pray for you. Whatever has closed the door of financial resources to make sure you perpetually beg, I cast that spirit from your life forever. I cast that spirit from your life forever. Let me pray the last prayer. You love God, but every time you are at a height spiritually, something just happens to you. In a way you don't know, it may be a dream, it may be something, and the next thing you open your Bible, you don't even know where to read again, you just close it. You go to prayer and you stand in Jesus' name two minutes. You are not sleepy and you are not busy, but once you can sit down on your phone and before you know it, three hours has gone. But you get up to pray. I will pray later on. Eight o'clock, I will pray. It's a spirit attacking your destiny because you only prosper as your soul prospers. Therefore, fire upon your altar. Receive it now. Fire upon your altar. Receive it now. Fire upon your altar, receive it now. Fire upon your altar, receive it now. I'm praying. There are spirits that manipulate your vision and manipulate your dreams. It's supposed to be an avenue that God will show you things. But of late you found out that everything you have seen and told people got you in trouble is a sign that something has been hijacked. There is a gift. There is an anointing right now. I purify the workings of the Spirit in your life. Let the spirit of error leave your spiritual experience now. Receive grace to see correctly. Receive grace to share accurately. Finally, every family that is represented here, whether they are born again or not, the fact that you are here standing, representing them, in the name of Jesus, tonight we pronounce judgment Hear me. upon every man, woman, altar, and every yoke programmed against your family. They perish tonight. Every strife, every harpalist, every priest, they perish tonight. Father, we give you the praise. Declare in one minute, I am free. Wave your hands and give Jesus thanks. It's finished. Finally. Finally. I can arise again. Listen. When I did what I just led you to, I remember I went that night and I slept. And I began to see strange things. My destiny just opened up from page to page. New levels of the anointing came. New levels of fire. Let me tell you. I want you to sit tight and watch the excellency of light over darkness in the days that follow. This deliverance session will make you respect God in a way you have never done. Believe me when I tell you this. You watch out for the testimonies. 
you will see open. I'm not talking of testimonies, tea came, bread came. Testimonies that in one day, the rewards of one year can come to a man because the yoke has been broken. Jesus, we give you the praise. And Father, we declare tonight your people have paid the price to stay this late, to see to it that the doors of their destiny is open. Father, I stretch my hands as your priest and I seal this deliverance session in the name of Jesus. Hear me. What you have been delivered from now, you will never be delivered from it again. The door that has been opened for you now, you will never pray for this door to be opened again. The chain that has been broken over your life, you will never have to pray for that chain to be broken. The grace to enjoy the full benefit experientially of the victory of Christ in your life. I release that grace now. In the name of Jesus. Please give Jesus a hand clap. Amen. Hallelujah. Please keep standing. Our time is gone. This is your first time worshipping with us here at Koinonia. Hold on, please. If this is your first time, I know that our time is gone. Thank you so much for your cooperation. I don't want to end this service without acknowledging you. What a time in his presence. Wherever you are, aside from those at Overflow 3, please, I'd like you to make your way right inside here. Just stand before me and let me speak a blessing over your life. God bless you. Let's honor them as they come out. God bless you. God bless you. Koinonia, is this how you honor people? Hallelujah. By the way, let me challenge you. I like you when you go back tonight, no matter how late, receive grace from God to seal your prayer with prophetic pronouncements. I started over you, but you can take even if it's 10 minutes or 15 minutes, just seal this prayer with prophetic announcements and call into your life everything you want to see. God bless you. Please let them all come. Let's appreciate them as they come. Hallelujah. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. I, I love and appreciate and honor every single one of you. This is Koinonia, a meeting put together by Eternity Network International. And I'm honored to have you around. Thank you for the sacrifice of coming around to round off our deliverance series with us. It's been a special series on deliverance. And we're trusting God for a great time. We want to pray for you. I want you to stretch your hands over them, saints of God, not you. The people of God are praying for you. Let's stretch our hands towards them and bless them. Koinonia, bless them from your heart. You are anointed. We decree and declare over your life. Every challenge that stands before you, even as we have prayed, it will surprise you the way things will change and turn around. I declare that every anointing and every grace that must step into your life in this season, I declare that that anointing comes upon you in the name of Jesus. For those of you in ministry, fresh anointing, you step into a new dimension of results in the name of Jesus. For those of you who came because you are trusting God for one thing or the other, I release the grace of God upon you and I command you to prosper. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord bless you in the name of Jesus. Now, I know that it's raining outside. I don't know if there is no place to manage them. We can just find a system. Just follow this lady waving her hands. The lady waving her hands very quickly. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you so much. We believe you are mightily blessed. To connect with the ministry and get more from Apostle Joshua Selman, follow us on Facebook and Twitter at Koinonia ENI to stream Koinonia Live. 
go to mixler.com and download the teachings on coinunersermons.org for questions and inquiries call 0814-721-4444 or 0907 777 7853